What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2025 BMW X7, courtesy of BMW of York in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today, we're in the new X7 because this is BMW's largest SUV. Also, I just noticed, just taking a look down here, we have nearly 600 miles of range on this thing, which is incredible. Incredible. This is definitely a road trip vehicle without a doubt and there is actually some new advanced safety for the 2025 model year as well So ultimately in this video We will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing it said there's essentially two different configurations for the new x7 You got the x drive 40i the one we are in today starting at $83,500. Then you have the M60i starting at $110,900. Having said that, there's plenty of different options for this thing. Our particular configuration and our xDrive 40i comes in right at around $100,000, believe it or not. But so you can imagine with those two different configurations, there are two different power plants available for the X7. First one belonging to the 40i trim level that we have today. That one is powered by a three liter twin power turbocharged inline six cylinder putting out 375 horsepower 5200 rpm 398 pound feet of torque coming in at right around 1800 rpm that power being sent to all four wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters and launch control by the way that's pretty cool zero to 60 time approximately 5.6 seconds for this one mpg numbers then coming in at 20 in the city 24 on the highway taking premium a leaded fuel but then there is the m60i trim level that one of course powered by a more powerful four 4.4 liter twin power turbocharged v8 putting out 523 horsepower at 5500 rpm 553 pound feet of torque coming in at 1800 rpm power sent to all four wheels yet again through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters and launch control zero to 60 time for that one 4.5 seconds that's pretty impressive with mpg numbers coming in at 16 in the city 20 on the highway again taking premium unleaded fuel but so that before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in our x7 i do want to mention to you guys the drive modes and so those buttons are located just to the left of the shifter there drive modes will include eco pro comfort and sport adjusting things like the shift points of throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put those paddle shifters here to the test and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here it's holding it too good here we go <laughs> instantaneous all right i kind of expected that because i just got done reviewing the x5 but yeah paddle shifters are instantaneous which always surprises me but it really shouldn't at this point i i should know bmw at this point haven't reviewed them for like 10 years now that is incredible the paddle shifters are lightning quick you don't expect that on suvs i don't expect that at least on suvs but bmw never lets me down with these paddle shifters they are just so impressive and even this is this isn't even the m60i this is the extra 40i and they're still ridiculously quick very high quality as well so big fan of them i just get back full control to the x7 though let's now go ahead and find one more straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get our new x drive 40i x7 here up to speed all right found our straightaway here we're going to do this from a standstill in three two one go there it is <laughs> Yeah, that's plenty quick. Definitely not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. Keep in mind, there is a more powerful M60i trim level that gives you that twin power turbocharged V8. But having said that, this one is plenty of get up and go. You're not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. Anything sub six seconds, zero to 60, is pretty dang good. I'm just going to say that. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so as expected, you will find four wheel ventilated disc brakes. That does come standard. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at extremely mind blowing, 105 feet. That is insane for a vehicle the size of the X7. I'm just gonna say that. As far as uh, braking feel goes, it it's not bad. It, I don't know that it feels like 105 feet. That's a motor trend number. Um, but the braking feel is nice, and I will say it's a little bit on the firmer side of things, but 105 feet, that is incredible. If that number is right from Motor Trend, and I would assume Motor Trend's got some credibility at this point, that's that's like a sports car number. That's absolutely ridiculous. So 
yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't know. It just didn't feel like 105 feet in my test drive here today. Am I, I don't know. I've been testing cars for quite a while now. It didn't feel like that, but the braking feels still fine. But then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a double wishbone type front suspension in the back, a lightweight multi-link integral rear suspension, but also a two axle self-leveling air suspension that comes standard. So that's definitely going to help you out with ride quality there. I will say that. And the M60i goes above and beyond all of that, adding rear axle steering, which I think I first saw on the uh, Maybach S-Class. That is pretty insane. And also an M Sport differential, which helps uh, distribute power between the rear wheels essentially to help prevent understeer as well so those two are going to be added with the m60i as far as uh ride quality goes in our short little test drive here today it's one of the first things i noticed definitely an incredibly smooth ride i guess that makes sense though with the two axle self-leveling air suspension you would expect that from that but definitely absorbing york's rotor perfections perfectly nicely so very nice ride quality a very good road trip vehicle for that reason as far as steering feel goes let me go ahead and actually uh let me put it back in sport driving mode it is a noticeable difference, 100%, dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So in that sport driving mode, it's a much heavier feel to the steering, better helping point you in the direction that you wanna go. But if you didn't want that heavier feel, just put it in the comfort driving mode, and it does loosen up a good bit. Still tends to lean on the heavier side of things, which I personally prefer. But uh, yeah, incredible steering feel in this thing. As far as cabin noise goes, we are going 25 miles per hour. It might not sound like that, but it is an incredibly serene cabin here in the X7 without a doubt. And of course, acoustic laminated glass does come standard. You would expect that in a vehicle like the X7. So that may be part of the reason why it is such a serene cabin in this thing. Touching our rear visibility, we do have the third row up right now. I will say if you have that third row up, those third row headrests are definitely gonna impede visibility. They take up a lot of real state back there i will say that so uh put the third row down if you don't have it in use i'll just say that rain sensing windshield wipers they do come standard on the x7 uh, touching on forward visibility so that essentially is going to turn on the windshield wipers whenever the car detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's like automatic headlights just one less thing you got to worry about there then want to also add to all of that a head-up display is going to come standard on the m60i it is available with the premium package on the 40i that we have today if you're interested that premium package goes for 1800 and $50. So right now I am looking at my speed, speed limited safety features up on my windshield. We'll say it's a lot easier to see without sunglasses, but it is incredibly bright. One of the brightest head-up displays I've definitely seen. And the cool thing about BMW head-up displays is when you change the drive mode, it completely changes the look of the head-up display as well. Not just the digital gauges, but the head-up display. So it looks absolutely incredible. Well done, BMW. But Anywho, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 BMW X7. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 BMW X7 finished in black, sapphire, metallic, in case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one but as always let's go ahead and start with where the x7 is made taking a look at the vin first character is the number five indicating that the new x7 is actually built and assembled here in the u.s specifically south carolina in case you were curious but starting up front bmw active kidney grill does come standard with either satin chrome surrounds or gloss black surrounds we do happen to have the m sport package on this particular x7 which essentially turns all those satin chrome surrounds into to gloss black surround so this one is all blacked out for that particular reason that m sport package but body colored front accents and front lip for the non m sport 40i gloss black accents for the m sport 40i and the m60i front air curtains to those bottom corners helping direct air around the wheel entire combination of course led headlights with led daytime running lights do come standard you do get the automatic feature as well as automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there did want to also mention that there is an option uh called crystal headlights it's a pretty cool look it really does look like crystals but that goes for twenty one hundred dollars and uh, i don't know if you guys saw that but the grill shutters do keep opening and closing so that is pretty cool hopefully you guys noticed that again that's dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time so hopefully you guys saw that in action that pretty much rounds out the front end though let's now go ahead and swing around to the side all right so we're now making our way to the side of this one all the way to the top you're either going to find aluminum or gloss black roof rails gloss black or satin chrome window surrounds again this is all dependent upon the configuration that you go with rear privacy 
glass does come standard taking a look at those side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they are heated with led integrated turret signals and of course they are power folding then as well taking a look at the front fenders there you guys probably notice a little bit of an indentation that is not functional that is simply for uh for show for look so don't want to mention that but body colored side skirts and fender surrounds do come standard for all trim levels across the board as I would expect on an X7, but that definitely makes this one look so much better, in my opinion. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. 21 inch alloys do come standard on the X7. However, there are 21 inch, 22 inch, and 23 inch wheel designs available for this one. We happen to have that M Sport wheel setup with us here today. And take a look at those black calpers as well. This one really is all blacked out. There's a couple different color options for the calpers, so wanted to mention that. You guys could spec it on BMW's website, but Idaho. That pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, and so we're now swinging around to the back of the X7 here, all the way to the top. You guys will see that uh, uh, shark fin antenna up there, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that rear window wiper, you got the uh, either X-Drive 40i badging or the M60i badging. LED taillights coming standard. They are extremely bright, so I am a huge fan of that. Just below it all, you guys are gonna see that tow hitch there. That is an option. We happen to have the option. Obviously, you get four and seven pin connectors as expected with that one, so that's pretty cool. But to the sides, BMW does exhaust better than everybody else, I swear integrated dual exhaust outlets with either chrome or gloss black tips i love it i love that they're integrated i love that they're exposed as opposed to being tucked away like most other manufacturers are doing right now it looks so dang good but having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the X7, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate, of course, that does come standard. There's a button on the key fob, of course, there's a button on the tailgate itself then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 12.8 cubic feet behind that third row. Of course, you can fold the third row down, bumping that up to 48.6 cubic feet. Then with all rows folded, it actually comes in at a pretty darn impressive 90.4 cubic feet. That's a good bit, you guys. But anyways, velour carpeting does come standard in typical BMW fashion. I actually love that. It's pretty darn soft back there. Cargo cover does come standard. You got LED cargo lighting back there. There's grocery bag hooks. There are tie down anchors as well. Little bit of netted storage then. And there is also actually a 12 volt power outlet back there then as well. But make your way up to the third row legroom. I'm actually gonna give this a shot for you guys. 33.3 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there but if you are able to fit back there I will say there's a lot going on for those third row passengers believe it or not you of course do have cup holders there is rear ventilation and uh, climate control specifically for those third row passengers they actually have their own zone they can adjust their own climate temperature back there which is pretty crazy because it's very rare that third row passengers get any choice in that so that was pretty darn cool to see another cool thing that i found is they do get rear charging ports back there as well so that was pretty nice and then to really put it over the top they get their own little moonroof that they can control from the third row that's what really impressed me that's extremely rare like i thought it was just this panoramic moonroof here which goes through the second row but then i noticed when i got back to the third row that the third row passengers actually have their own little panoramic roof up there as well which they have access to control so I loved that. But anyways, then make your way up to the second row legroom. That comes in at 37.6 inches. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in that second row. Bench seating does come standard. However, captain's chairs are available. That's an $850 option. We have that option, so I did want to mention that. So you guys are looking to see what that looks like right there. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard if you go with the bench seating at least. Otherwise, um, you're not going to get it with the captain's chairs, obviously. USB charging ports does come standard both just below the uh the climate control vents there but as well as on the back side of the front seat so you got tons of charging ports back there rear ventilation like i said does come standard rear window sunshades is available and they are power adjustable that's incredible i love that they're power adjustable heated rear seats also available so Again, so much going on for the rear passengers. I absolutely love that. BMW did this thing wonderfully, but 
Anywho, then making our way up to the front seats, power adjustable multi-contour front seats do come standard. Memory settings for both the driver and the passenger, you gotta love that. Heated front seats and heated front armrest coming standard, that's crazy. Leather seating coming standard, merino leather goes for $2,700 if you wanted to go that option, but it's available. Ventilated and massaging seats also available though, so quite a bit going on, but overall as far as seat comfort goes, incredibly comfortable, even the headrest are super soft as well kind of cushion like so definitely a huge fan of the seating in the x7 but then take a good look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is going to be leather wrapped it is power adjustable and it is heated as well so pretty much everything you could want from a steering wheel the 10 and 2 grips definitely bolstered on the thicker side of things and that's just because we got the uh, m sport package it's also going to be this way for the m60i so love those grips on that thing but then make your way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here a lot of your buttons are located on the side of the key like the uh button to pop the power tailgate there and also the unlock button but on the front of the key you got your lock button that's the bmw logo if you press that in three times that's going to be your remote start but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of the shifter and so once started up when it comes to these gauges it is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster it is going to adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in as well honestly i think i like the gauges of the eco pro mode the best but comfort and uh, sport gauges are also going to give you a different look up there um, along with along with the uh, head-up display like I was mentioning earlier and of course with the self-leveling air suspension I'm changing the drive modes it is raising up and lowering the suspension so with the sport driving mode obviously the suspension is going to be lowered for better aerodynamics with the comfort driving mode it's going to be raised a little bit for a little better uh, enjoyable comfort for the suspension settings but anyway so I probably should have mentioned that earlier but back to the gauges it tells you how many miles you have left until you hit empty which like I said at the beginning of the video was like 588 when I first started driving this one that is incredible gives you speed limit recognition uh, outside temperature pretty much everything you could possibly want on a digital gauge cluster but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality i want to first mention there's an alcantara headliner it comes standard on the m60i it is optional on the 40i we have that it is so freakishly nice but anyways panoramic moonroof does come standard believe it or not on the x7 led interior lighting also standard you got a universal garage door openers for up to three different garage doors found just below that frameless rear view mirror you gotta love that four zone climate control does come standard gotta love that wireless phone charger coming standard multicolor ambient lighting coming standard as far as the finishes go though there's plenty of different options there you got wood carbon fiber piano black trim finishes so a bunch of different options there i really like the carbon fiber ish look that we got going on here right around these uh uh, climate control vents and the other cool thing is it's kind of a geometric pattern going on there so i liked that also the actual buttons to adjust the climate control direction are finished in this texturized silver finish so that was pretty cool just above the passenger side glove box got the x7 lettering or logo and it's going to change color dependent upon the ambient lighting color that you select so that's another really cool feature of that but um, just in front of the shifter, you got a wireless phone charger. You got a little bit of storage next to that 12 volt power outlet, USB charging port, couple cup holders, of course. Within the center armrest, there is a, a decent amount of storage in there. You got a USB charging port in there as well. But overall, interior quality was incredible. Definitely finished very nicely. So you got no complaints from me, BMW. But now let's go ahead and make our way to that infotainment screen. It is massive. It is a 14.9 inch center infotainment screen. Uh, the way you control it, it is touchscreen, like I said, and uh, there is a circular dial and buttons located just to the right of the shifter if that's easier for you where you're actually driving. So a couple different options there, but Bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. You got to appreciate that factory navigation system also coming standard you can check out your climate control settings up there as well along with your ambient lighting settings so tons of different colors you can select up there you can also adjust the brightness as well all of your heated seat buttons heated steering wheel buttons there's a spotify icon there's even youtube actually you have to set that up but so i can't show that to you guys right now otherwise i would but i love that youtube is up there that's pretty darn cool but who's going to be watching youtube while they're driving anyways radio information you can access up there of course as well so when it comes to the sound
sound systems. There are two of them. You're going to find a 10 speaker hi-fi sound system with 205 watts coming standard on the X-Drive 40i. But there is also a 16 speaker Harman Kardon sound system coming standard on the M60i optional on the X-Drive 40i. So we do actually have that option. And by the way, that comes with 464 watts. So anywho, let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Mercy Me is amazing. And by the way, did you guys see that gesture control? I can turn it up by just doing my finger in a clockwise motion here, or I can turn it down in the counterclockwise motion. So I love gesture control. But anyways, uh, incredible amount of bass, plenty of clarity. That's a lot of speakers, even in a vehicle the size of the X7. So that is a perfect sound system for this thing. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the X7 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, but also that surround view monitor as well to the right there, giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying, I always mention IIHS first, but the X7 is actually not yet rated by IIHS, so I can't actually mention it. But anyways, front side side, current airbags do come standard in the back of course you got latch aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard frontal collision warning active blind spot detection lane departure warning speed limit info and parking sensors actually do come standard as well then there is a driver assistance professional package that goes for $2,500 which is where the new advanced safety comes in for the 2025 model year essentially the change they made for the 2025 x7 is with this particular driving assistance professional package now rather than actually having the x7 change lanes via the the turn signal indicators you can now authorize a lane change by simply looking into the rear view mirror so it's kind of got to know that you're checking your rear view mirror so you're looking to see if anybody's there and that's going to notify them that it's okay to change lanes and of course it's only going to do it if it is safe to do so so that's the update for 2025 not a ton but a little advanced safety update but anyways when it comes to my final thoughts of the x7 great driving dynamics this thing has plenty of power the paddle shifters were lightning quick something you don't expect to find on a three row suv good cargo space as well 90 cubic feet that's dang impressive just for a little bit of comparison here i got some numbers the mercedes-benz gls comes in at 84 cubic feet so substantially more than that volvo xc90 volvo's largest suv comes in at 65.5 cubic feet audi q7 69.6 cubic feet so this is the largest suv now if if you compare it to like the cadillac escalade that's going to be a little different those things are beasts but as far as you know decent size three row suvs this thing is the largest so that's pretty impressive i like it for that i love gesture control i'm gonna keep saying that i wish every vehicle had a version of gesture control because that is so dang cool uh great tech as well i love the head-up display specifically the fact that it actually changes the design when you adjust the drive mode that's so dang cool really the only thing i could think of for this as i said at the beginning of the video is that there's so many different options this thing can get very pricey very quick but honestly it's kind of expensive anyway so maybe it doesn't matter as much to the people buying it but uh, this one's what seventeen thousand dollars over msrp so i don't know it is a lot of options but let me know what you guys think of the x7 in the comment section below that's about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews because that is what we do here in this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video Stay gold.